Is Anno 1404 the historical city builder that you've been waiting to sink your teeth into? Or is it mostly gristle and bone? Is it going to get you excited to return to the era of enlightenment? Or will you feel dumber for having tried it? Watch on and find out. My name is Thorax, and this is Strategy for Busy People. If you've got a few minutes, I'll tell you what to play. I have a funny relationship with Anno 1404. This is actually my third or fourth attempt at playing through it. I purchased it a really, really, really long time ago, somewhere on some games website that I think is long gone. I played several hours of it, but my computer at the time was struggling to keep up with the graphics. A few years later, I returned to Anno 1404 to try again, purchasing it again, to only get a few hours into the campaign to realize that I had already played it. I quickly got bored because I remembered everything, including the fact that I had hit a mission in the campaign that I couldn't figure out how to get past. So I shelved it. So tell me. Fast forward five more years and I saw that the early Anno franchise was on sale at good old games. I figured I would buy it to get the older games, which for some reason I thought might be newer. So yes, I have now purchased Anno 1404 for the third time and played it yet another time. In this playthrough, I have about eight hours in the game. I had a vague recollection of some of the things, but overall it was fresh to me, so I was looking at it with mostly unbiased eyes. Give them to me. Anno 1404 is an interesting type of city builder. There isn't an awful lot in the way of managing the operations of your empire like you would find in city skylines or, say, Nebuchadnezzar. Most of what you're doing is balancing supply chains to ensure your residents are pleased. When they are pleased, their dwellings can level up, which nets you more tax revenue. You have to be careful about not building yourself into a corner because additional buildings have an operational cost associated. It's entirely possible that you can have too many things but not enough tax revenue to support it. I almost rage quit one mission in the campaign because I wasn't paying careful attention. There is a naval component to the game which, at least in the early campaign I experienced, is pretty unsophisticated. Ships can do damage and have limited health, they can also be equipped with interesting power-ups that you can buy with status points from the various shops. The campaign is somewhat interesting. You are a young buck looking to make your mark and some really evil guys in positions of power are being abusive. I've never heard that before. Presumably, you will emerge triumphant over evil in the end, but I never got that far. And I've never heard that before. The campaign mode has a bunch of cute, and occasionally very annoying, intermediary steps to get through. Build this stuff to unlock this stuff so that you can do this stuff or give stuff to some person or another. It's really not too bad, but it essentially gets repetitive very quickly. In fact, the game is so straightforward in the execution of how things work that there are various calculators out there that tell you exactly how many buildings A, B, and C you need to support a population of X low class and Y middle class folks. It almost becomes a giant math equation. Just build this many things exactly to get to the next step, which then requires building exactly that many things. Okay, I guess. Unfortunately, the monotony of it all got to me, and I abandoned the campaign. Again, for the third time. While the campaign maps are fixed and pretty one-way solvable, there is a skirmish-type mode with procedurally generated maps where you can play against AI opponents. This should be interesting, right? Because it's an open-ended strategy builder that has lots of resource transformation systems. It should be right up my alley, right? Nope. Still boring. There are some mini mission elements to the skirmish, but overall it's just the same mathematical building order as before. It almost ends up feeling like an RTS with a build order. To paraphrase the great Lupe Fiasco's little weapon, just three more breweries and then we can get a nobleman. Before I give my final verdict, take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to share with your friends. Agree with me, disagree with me, or want to see other content? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to support me in making more of these videos, become a patron on Patreon. Your support really makes a difference. The Final Verdict The game looks nice and has aged well. Would you believe that it's nearly 14 years old at this point? 
It has a lot of the right elements, but for me, it just fell flat. I couldn't get deeply hooked on the storyline of the campaign on this third playthrough. It often felt quite slow. It was easy to build myself into a corner and then ultimately fail the mission. On my trademark three-point score scale of avoid, meh, and I forgot to eat, I wouldn't say you should skip this one, but just be prepared to be underwhelmed. If build ordery builders are your thing, and you've never tried the Anno franchise, this wouldn't be a bad place to start. But, well... Meh. <laughs>